Good afternoon, my name is Agatha Mali, and you're joining us live from the distribution center, uh, also known as the World Vision Zambia GIK Warehouse, where we're going to be learning, appreciating, and just knowing more about GIK and the impacts that it has had in the communities that we serve. I'm sure uh, for some of you who have been to our communities that we operate from, you must have heard people talking about the items or resources that they have received from GIK, and today, we are here with uh, Mr. Fred Mazumba, who is the GIK manager, who is going to shed more light to us about what GIK is all about and uh, what uh, impact it has had on the community. Mr. Mazumba, you're welcome to this interview. Thank you. Thank okay. You. So before we go any further, Mr. Mazumba, kindly briefly explain to us uh, what is meant by GIK and how it has impacted um, the programs that we have um, that we have as World Vision. Thank you so much, uh, Agatha. Um, JK, which uh, simply uh, means gifts in kind. Um, JK, uh, these are resources that we receive as a world vision um, and that are generally used for our programming. So these are gifts in kind. We have donors that support our work through gifts in kind. And we have a whole range of gifts and kinds which we are using in our programming, which include health, education, livelihood, sponsorship, and all other areas of our, of our programming. And so these um, resources are used um, to improve uh, the lives of our, our people in our communities, uh, especially the children. So we have JIK in form of medicines or drugs we have JK in form of uh, uh, school materials, school supplies, uh, desks, uh, office uh, equipment. We also do have um, uh, medical equipment. And so we have a whole range. We have clothing, bicycles, uh, medical supplies, which we can use in different areas of our, our program. So JK is making a huge uh, difference. Uh, for instance, we have uh, children in our communities that still walk long distances and we have received GIK in form of bicycles which we are giving particularly to children in uh, whose, whose uh, villages are far away from school. So these bicycles are used uh, by children to access school, especially the girl um, children. We have programs or campaigns you know, to encourage children especially girls, to be in school. And so GIK is one of the resources that we are using to encourage our school-going children. And speaking of that, how, how is GIK integrated in, in World Vision Zambia's programming? Um, just like any other uh, resource, we, we have GIK and, uh, in our planning uh, uh, processes. Uh, we look at GIK like cash. Yeah, so it's... it's it's an addition, or it complements the cash that we have. Instead of having the cash, we have these resources at our disposal. So we are using JK like in, uh, in the area of education, um, in health, for instance. We have child health week programs where we, we, we support our Ministry of Health with uh, deworming tablets, vitamin A. And so we are reaching out to the well-being of our, our children, or we are contributing to the well-being of children through the use of JK. So we are integrating JK into our programming as a resource at our disposal. Mm. Then given that JK uh, specifically goes to communities that are in need, how does World Vision identify um, specific need, needs in communities um, through the donations that come from JK? Well, um, like I mentioned, it's a, it's a resource, so it goes through the same process that uh, we do, especially when we have some funding of some sort. Uh, we identify the areas of our programming, um, and so JK contributes to that. Uh, of course, not all communities have the same needs, they are different. So even as they plan, and then they look for resources, you know, you may have a project that is worth, say, uh, $100,000. And we may secure maybe $50,000 in form of cash 
Uh, so maybe the other part of the 50,000 would come in as JK. So that's how um, uh, JK is uh, integrated into the program, and that's how we also identify uh, the JK gaps uh, in, in, in our communities. And can you maybe um, provide an insight of the type of JK uh, resources that are mostly or commonly distributed to the communities and what impact have they had on, um, on the community, especially children? Yeah. Uh, the common ones uh, include clothing, yeah, uh, just general clothing for children and also for, for adults. We have bicycles, we have school supplies. Um, and school furniture. So these are very common. Um, I know like in our country, we, there is a campaign to equip uh, schools with school uh, desks. And so World Vision is coming in to supplement. And so these are some of the common um, JK items that we, we receive. School desks, uh, supplies, uh, like books, uh, backpacks for children, um, clothing, shoes, yeah. So these are the little, little things, but that make a huge difference. Some children are not able to go to school on account of not having clothing uh, and shoes. So JK supports that. Oh. And, and how does uh, World Vision collaborate with uh, local partners as well as uh, authorities in the country on how to distribute JK and how it can be utilized? Yeah. I think in the first place, even in terms of identification of needs, we do partner. Uh, we don't work in isolation. Uh, we work with uh, the communities. We, we work with the local authorities, the government, even in terms of assessing uh, the needs. Uh, so they come in. Um, so the communities identify the needs. And so these GIKs are not imposed on the communities. So these are the things that the communities um, look forward to or are in need of and so when JK comes it's not something that is um, that is un unexpected but this is something that the communities would have desired and so we work with the local communities also in terms of identifying the beneficiaries and also distribution. And how does World Vision Zambia um, monitor and evaluate the outcome of JIK and in the programs that we implement and um, how, how is it measured to measure the successes of uh, what has been distributed through, through JIK? Yeah, well, JIK, is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, is a resource uh, which is utilized in a way that we utilize these other resources like cash and so JIK is also subjected to minimum standards and also monitoring to ensure that uh, we are getting the desired impact. Uh, so it is integrated in our mainstream, uh, in, our mainstream uh, in terms of operations, so it's subject to audit and it's subject to monitoring and evaluation. And so all the departments that are charged with these responsibilities uh, do ensure that uh, JK is assessed and uh, monitored to ensure that it's uh, being utilized as, as planned. And also uh, program staff, area program staff uh, in their day-to-day uh, -day activities, reporting, they ensure that JIK is part of that. Uh, they, it's reported on and uh, issues of accountability are also uh, taken into account. Uh, so that's how JIK is monitored. And, and as we know, um, in everything we do, there are challenges and there's something that we'll pick to learn from. And through JIK, what are some of the challenges uh, or lessons learned that you have picked uh, through the uh, implementation of JIK uh, and the distribution that is made? Then maybe you can also mention how are these challenges addressed? Yeah, I think, well, the, the major challenge that I would say is that, um, well, the need out there is, is great. Mm -hmm. The need for JK is great. Talk about school uh, requirements, school furniture, the need is great. Um, so sometimes you're not able to, uh, to meet the demand. Um, we've encouraged uh, 
uh, our area programs who are the recipients of uh, JIK to be more focused, but sometimes they would want to thinly distribute JIK because the need is, is great. So uh, maybe you have so many classrooms, you know, competing for few desks. Yeah, so sometimes you will find that uh, maybe some programs would, would take very few, so maybe the impact may not uh, be so much realized. So our encouragement is that to be more focused, and we are hoping we could uh, be receiving uh, much more than we are receiving now, uh, to be more focused so that maybe if we have a consignment of uh, school desks, we target one school until, you know, like the entire uh, gap is filled. So those are some of the challenges that they need on the ground. Talk about bicycles. Bicycles, um, well, they are expensive. Um, one shipment or one container uh, that would come would only maybe have a maximum of 100. But look at the need on the ground. It's much more. 100 would just fit maybe one community. Yeah, so those are some of the challenges that we, we face. We have so many requests uh, from our area program, from the, uh, the, our partners. Yeah, so to fulfill such is quite a, a challenge. And how does World Vision um, engage with local communities to ensure that um, there's an active participation and feedback is given through the, the process of GIK distribution? Yeah. Um, well, we do engage actively with our partners, especially the communities. First of all, they are the ones who do the identification of um, our beneficiaries. Um, our staff work with uh, volunteers. We have volunteers who at times also are beneficiaries. So they are the ones who do the identification of our beneficiaries, those that are in need. Uh, Local partners as well, like our government uh, at, at district level, they are part. And uh, World Vision is also part of the development coordinating committee in all the districts. So they get involved. Uh, for instance, when we have programs like Child Health Week and other national uh, days, yeah, so we look at how JK can be used. And the local partners are part of that, and they are very much. Minister of Health, like the Child Health Unit. We are working with the Child Health Unit very well. Uh, so uh, during planning, we are part of that uh, process up to the distribution of COVID. Yeah. And we've heard so much already about GIK. And what word would you have, or what word do you have to the people that have been supporting us with GIK just to ensure that it life of a child in the community is transformed, the life of a child or the well-being of a child in that community is up to good and they're just doing well. What word would you have to our supporters or to our donors? Yeah, I think to our donors, for me, it's just a big thank you. These are gifts go a long way. They're making a huge difference in the lives of our communities, particularly the children. When you see the smiles of the children, yeah, some of these things may, may appear to be small, but they make a huge difference. Talk about a backpack. It's a pride of a child. When they're going to school, they have a backpack which has some supplies in it. And we know that our donors went through a lot to just mobilize that kind of uh, resource. So for us, it's a big, big thank you. Think of children who walk long distances and given a bicycle. That in itself is a motivation to be in school. You know, sometimes children drop out of school on account of distance, but when they receive gifts in kind in form of a bicycle, it's a boost in their life. So for me, to all our donors, I know there are so many, I may not mention uh, each one of them, but it's just to say thank you. Thank you for these wonderful resources that go a long way in achieving what we intend to achieve. They go a long way to the well-being of our children in our communities. Awesome. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. Mazumba, for so this. Much.
wonderful time that you've given us and for sharing more about GIP and the impacts that it has had on the communities that we serve. And back to you, our viewers, we thank you so much for joining us and for watching and listening in on the impact of GIK. And I also wish to say thank you to our donors who have supported us and rather continue to support us with GIK. From me, I got the money. Thank you so much. Please continue uh, following our World Vision Zambia pages on different platforms. That's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, as well as on um, LinkedIn. We'll see you soon.